Greetings. Welcome to Mile Webinars, the service provided to you by Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship, Mile. Mile is a nonprofit institute that aims to build leadership and entrepreneurship excellence in the Middle East and the Islamic world. Our webinar today is Internet of Things, and we will discuss vision, challenge, application, and administration with our speaker for the day, Dr. Ahmed Abdul Jawad. Dr. Ahmed Abdul Jawad is having over 13 years of experience in IoT. Uh, he is a senior member. College of uh, Science and Engineering, Central Michigan University. Uh, before we start our session, you should know that there are some tips to give you better experience. Please close any other tabs in your device to ensure good quality. Use headphones for better sound quality and less distractions. You can use the chat room to interact with the speakers. Get as much as you can from this webinar and be sure to ask some questions. You may write your question and we will get back to them once we reach to the question and answer session. Now, I will leave you with our speaker, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, greetings, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you very much for a nice introduction and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, maybe also good evening. I know that you are all from all over the world, so I can say good day for everyone because here is morning, I think, in Saudi Arabia is evening. But um, anyway, thank you for attending my uh, uh, presentation today. Um, today, I will be happy to talk about uh, Internet of Things. Uh, I looked at the survey very quickly to understand your background and from where to start. But uh, anyway, I will make it uh, very uh, uh, like uh, wide uh, to benefit everyone. Uh, if you are if you are in a research area, you will benefit. If you are still beginning of IoT, you will uh, benefit something. So I will go from high level to low level to be sure that everyone get something out of this presentation. So today my presentation will be about Internet of Things. I will give you what is the Internet of Things vision, challenge, application, and I will give you a very brief demonstration at the end, like in a video, so you can understand how we can do a complete system of IoT. So, uh, the agenda, I will start first to give you a definition of IoT. I understand that you will find zillions of definitions of IoT, but I will try to give my definition for IoT. Uh, then I will talk about uh, IoT vision and enablers. And also I will give you uh, my own architecture for IoT. I proposed one architecture, publish it in uh, one journal about IoT. And uh, I'll give you a few challenges in IoT. We have a lot of challenges, but I will address a few of them. So in order for maybe for you to get an idea to do research or project, I will give you some applications of IoT, not all the application. I will give you some of them, at least whatever I addressed or I worked myself. And at the end, I will give you a simple video to show you one complete system in IoT. So let me go to next here. So definition from the name itself, it's Internet of Things. It's two words, Internet and Things. We know what's Internet. We used before Internet to communicate between each other, me and you and others. We can send an email, we can social, we can chat, we can do whatever. So uh, using our computer or smart devices. So we use the internet but now things will come and use the internet without we even know so things will have everything will have ip address they can communicate with each other without human interfere so we will substitute human by things things can talk to each other can reach to an agreement can take action can control something and so on so this is just just simple definition so like for internet of things instead of using human to use computer or computer to communicate with each other 
uh, human used to do this, so we would like to substitute this by things. So let's go next. So the question here is, is IoT even a new thing? Uh, it depends actually, because it depends whom you ask. Like for example, if you ask me, I am, I'm doing uh, research long, long time ago, and I can say I'm, I'm doing Internet of Things for maybe 15, 20 years ago. But we didn't have that name because the technology at that time was very old. The cost was very high. Like, for example, I used to work with sensors. Each sensor is like a couple thousand dollars. And to, in order to send data to Internet, it took a long time for me to do programming and all of that stuff. But uh, now, if you ask someone now, everyone is say, oh, it's very, it's a, a unicorn uh, uh, idea. It's a magic. So Internet of Things is, very, is something new. And uh, it's first time to hear about it. Because now you start to have smart devices. You can, at home, you can buy your um, surveillance camera wi with Wi-Fi communication. And you just plug it in and you see your home from outside, from different country, you can control your home and all of this. This All of this is IoT. So so again, it's it's new. It's the concept itself it starts to talk about Internet of Things a few years ago, but we have been using the concept or everything for, from long, long time ago. So what are things? So things will be will refer to any physical object or device that has its own IP, and it can send and receive to the network by anything, Wi-Fi, by wired, by whatever. And things there is no limit for things here. So it can be uh, the gas station, it can be animals, it could be surveillance camera, uh, signal lights, it could be uh, airplane, car, train, you name it, anything, chair, uh, refrigerator, uh, microwave, stove, uh, maybe uh, the street itself can talk to cars and so on. So you name it, you, whatever you can add ID to anything, uh, you can um, call this thing. So everything will be connected. So, and as you, as you can see here, Internet of Things can connect a satellite, um, your uh, motorcycle, your webcam, your car, fan, bicycle, phone, whatever. Everything will be connected. Even the city will be connected. And also your home is connected. Your refrigerator and your stove, your phone, your light, everything will be connected together and they can communicate to make your life easier. They can communicate to make whatever mood you like in your home before you come. Like, for example, your home can check your calendar and can check you where you're at and it can detect if you are coming home. It can prepare the home for whatever you like, the mood you like, it can change the mood, the, the music you like, the light you like. Maybe it can prepare your food. Whenever you arrive, you can find everything uh, ready. Uh, not only home, even cities will be connected. The, maybe the airport will be connected to transportation. They can arrange to each other to make your life easier. When you arrive, you can find a cab or the bus waiting for you. Uh, maybe ambulance can communicate with other cars to make it to a hospital uh, very quickly. Uh, ambulance can communicate with the uh, hospital. Uh, even uh, f factories, they can communicate with dealers. They can uh, know which parts they need and they manufacture only this part. And this all kind of application in city, and we'll talk about some of them. So moving from city, even the entire world will be connected. Everything will be connected. So there is no limitation. You can... Uh, collect all the data, you can check uh, any device as soon as it's connected, so you can uh, you can get this information. 
and we start to see it now everything is start to be smart and uh, for me personally smart is a name for uh, marketing anyway because uh, i don't think all these devices are smart enough to do uh, their own decision but it does whatever we ask it or whatever we program this smart device to do but anyway we will start to talk about the smart government smart education smart tourism uh, smart security smart community and smart traffic and you name it so the entire world will be smart in order to make the entire world smart they, they need to communicate they need to understand each other they need to share information and this to make our life easier to make it easy for us to save fuel, save energy, to save the environment. We start to, to hear about green environment and all of this stuff. That's why we need everything to switch to be smart and connected to the internet. So what is the Internet of Things vision in general? When we came up with the uh, Internet of Things, what's our vision here? So the vision for the Internet of Things to fuse all these physical things uh, in the world together to bring different concepts and, uh, uh, and technical components together. And not only this, also to create a seamless network of billion of uh, devices and which can communicate with each other, can understand each other. And this will create a new ecosystem which um, all the devices can or all the devices will be able to uh, direct their uh, transport, adapt to their uh, respective environment. And not only this, also it will be self-configured uh, and self-maintained and self-repair itself. So it will be one piece to think together in order to come up with the best or the optimum uh, solution. IoT evolution, how, how do we start this? Actually, the, as I said, the idea is from long time ago, we had the same thing, but the technology didn't allow us to come up with a system, entire system and call it IoT. But a long time ago, when we start to uh, internet or the connectivity itself by sending an email, by um, searching online, by social together, uh, the idea starts from there. So we start the connectivity among people to share information. And all of this led to flat world, a small village. So we can communicate with each other. And this gives an, us an idea about Internet of Things. That's why they came up with uh, cloud computing. You can do whatever because the limitation of our computer or our devices. We start to think about send everything to the cloud do a lot of competition because we have a lot of resource, uh, super computers, a uh, lot of memory, a lot of storage. We start to do competition on the cloud. All of this starting from the con communication or the connectivity and cloud computing. This uh, led us to start to think about Internet of Things. Why we don't connect everything as well? Because we have the infrastructure and connect everything and start to have Internet of Things. This is the idea came from here, from when we started the internet. I'd like to mention here about the IoT market because whatever you are doing right now, if you are a student or if you are working in private sector, or if you're doing research, you need to be aware about the IoT market because uh, the future for IoT is very promising. Even if you just a student or researcher or an employee, you need to think about your own maybe startup or something. Uh, the market is very, very big. Uh, I can give you the history of IoT and you can see how dramatically the market change and number of devices change. Like for example, in 2003, we used to have 500 million devices connected together. And if you divide this with our population by then, it was 6.3 billion. You can find each one of us used to have 0.08 device. So it was like rarely you can find smart device with someone in 2003. In 2010, we start to have uh, 12 billion 
or 12.5 billion device or smart device. And if you divide this by our population, you can find out every one of us used to have almost two smart devices. In 2015, this number increased to almost four devices per person. And five years from now, in 2020, you will find almost every person will have seven, almost seven smart devices. So you can imagine how much dramatically the number has changed. You start to see yourself now, you have iPod, iPad, MacBook, uh, Android phone, and uh, you, you name it. You have a lot of smart devices connected. And you just to give you an idea about the market, in 2013, we had $1.9 trillion investment in IoT. By 2020, we will have $7.1 trillion. So it will be three times in only seven years. So that gives you an idea how how many devices will increase by, by 2020 or in the future and how much money will invest. So the market is very open for everyone right now, even ideas. If you are doing research, come, come up with some ideas, you can sell it to companies, um, new application, new devices, and you name it. So we'll talk about this down the line in a way. So what is the enabler? So what enable us to come up with IoT? I'm just trying to give you the background about IoT so you can be ready about, uh, about the ideas and stuff. So uh, us, it's us first, human, because for us, we can, uh, we can be either a consumer or producer. And I'm talking here maybe mainly about consumer because all of us love technology. And all of us loves all of this games and smart devices, smartphone and smart TV and all of this stuff. This encourage or enable IoT to come because uh, usually when um, people uh, demand something to so the market or the business, people go run after this and try to get something for them. So we are the first enabler for Internet of Things because we love technology. We love to have uh, a smart uh, devices. And uh, also the smart device, when we start to see the smart device, smart home, smart uh, phone, smart TV, even now I have some colleagues right, working with me right now for smart diaper. So even the diaper for babies will be smart. Everything will be smart. We love to have everything smart. So, and this has become available right now. It's cheaper, the technology, uh, it's advanced now and very cheap, so you can get smart devices easily with few uh, bucks. So this uh, smart devices enable us also to come up with the idea of internet. Not only this, also the communication network. We start to have the 3G, 4G, and now we are talking about 5G. Even Bluetooth, Wi-Fi is available right now. Uh, Zigbee and all, you name it, LoRa and all other wireless communication technology are very advanced right now. Uh, you can, the bandwidth is, is much better and the data rate is much faster. All of this helped us or enable us to come with Internet of Things. And the main thing also enable us to bring the IoT to real life is the cloud computing. We are advanced in cloud computing now. We can do whatever you want in terms of computation, storage, uh, data mining, and you name it. You, we have a lot of research going on with cloud computing. This enabled us right now to come up with uh, IoT application and so on. Oh, also something enabled us to come up with the IoT is a smart sensor. We start to see smart sensor, as I said before, a few years ago, when I started to work with uh, uh, Internet of Things, I, I used to buy some sensor, very simple sensor with a couple thousand dollars. It was very, very expensive. And it was very hard to interface it with any microcontroller. Even the microcontroller itself, it was uh, not uh, good enough to um, write away to plug and play or any sensor. Now we start to, to, uh, to hear about smart sensors. We have sensors, it's very smart, can sense whatever temperature, humidity, accelerometer, and uh, maybe a motion detector, 
you name it, any sensor, gas, gas um, sensor, it's very cheap and very smart. And it's a matter of you plug it to any microcontroller like Raspberry Pi or Arduino, and boom, you have the data and you can push the data to the internet. So this enabled us also to come up with uh, uh, IoT. Uh, not only uh, smart devices in home, or we can find also smart devices in agriculture. Oh. You can find the uh, humidity, uh, moisture sensor, and even you can see in some sensor now, it can detect uh, if the crop is ready to pick up or if there is a disease and can detect the, the type of disease and can apply some chemical without even the owner of this farm know. So it can uh, automate uh, the process in the farm. It can react with any disease or it can react if the crop is ready or anything wrong, and it can take the decision and react upon this. And... Also, for our smart cities, or um, we have smart sensor everywhere. If you have tunnel, uh, bridges, building, and all of this stuff, and I will give you an uh, application. I did it here in, at Central Michigan University about structural health monitoring. But the point here, we have smart sensor talk to each other. The tunnel can talk to the bridge and con can talk to any building or the government or the police. If something is going on with a tunnel accident or whatever, it can reroute the traffic to the bridge. It can communicate with the bridge, and the bridge can communicate with the police, and they can uh, communicate with each other with few sensors con connected to each uh, architecture in, uh, in, in, in the city. And again, this is a goal here to make our life easier to avoid problems. Maybe to you can make it to your uh, work faster. Uh, you can uh, save time, you can save fuel, you can save energy, and uh, so on. Uh, one of the biggest things enable us to come up with the IoT is uh, embedded processing unit now become very sophisticated and very advanced and very cheap. Like uh, you, we can have right now, we have BeagleBone, uh, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and uh, Intel, Addison, and you name it. And believe it or not, like um, uh, the Raspberry Pi, uh, maybe if someone know about it or if you don't know about it, it's a complete computer and you connect keyboard, mouse, monitor, and you have a complete computer and it it's maximum $40, very cheap and it's very powerful. And I can tell you that the Raspberry Pi maybe is more than a few thousand times better than my computer in high school. If you compare my computer or laptop in while I was in high school and with Raspberry Pi, uh, it's much, much, much better than my computer and faster and cheaper. My computer, I used to, I believe I purchased my computer by then by like $4,000. Now with 40 bucks, you can get something much better. And not only this, the, all of this um, microcontroller and embedded system are ready for any smart sensor or any are ready to send the data to the internet. Most of them, they have built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or and easy to attach these modules to any of the microcontroller now. And with few, maybe not only few, maybe with one hour, you can do one IoT application or one IoT system with few clicks here and there, connect your sensor, send the data to the internet, react. And I will show you uh, by the end uh, a video with my student. I give them one question about to design some IoT system and they were able to finish it in one hour. Uh, anyway, uh, the embedded processing unit enables us to come up with IoT. <clears throat> also the communication, as I said, the, the, especially the wireless communication is very advanced nowadays. We start to have the uh, Wi-Fi everywhere, ZigBee is very easy to uh, uh, deal with, Bluetooth, six loop, and even LoRa. LoRa is a communication system with long distance, few kilometers, you can send your data. And it's very cheap, the technology is very cheap and very reliable, and uh, you will be able to pick which one 
uh, it's good for your application and you just plug it to the uh, your system and everything is ready. And as I said, we have different uh, communication uh, protocols and different communication modules. You can pick and choose depend on um, your application or your project. You can you have different range with different data rate, and then you can decide from you can see from this graph if you would like to have uh, 10 meters, for example, and data rate is 100 megabit per second. So you can go with Wi-Fi. If you have a, a, a bigger range, uh, you can go with GSM. If you have a lower range and lower data rate, you can go with Zigbee or Bluetooth. And uh, it's again, you have a lot of options here for wireless communication. You can pick uh, according to the project you are doing with IoT. Another thing we start to see it right now, all the services online and sometimes it's free. So we have services and um, uh, and several APIs available on internet, like uh, Timbo. Timbo is a, a, a software, is a like a company. They are doing, they giving service. Uh, if you have a sensor connected to a Pi or Arduino, it's compatible with Arduino and Pi. You can connect their sensors, and you give, they give you cert, uh, an account. Sometimes for a student, they give it for free, or for anyone, they give one the first month for free. You just, uh, with few clicks, you will be able to send your data to the cloud and you can analyze the data and you can um, get feedback to send it back to your Arduino or Pi to control something. So this also enable us to come up with IoT. We have a lot of uh, services for Internet of Things or machine to machine or this all of this uh, available right now. And uh, some of them are free, some of them is very cheap to do it. Another example for the services I think works. I'm giving you this just, be, we have a lot of them, but this two uh, services, uh, myself personally, I use them with my student to um, to deal with it. Uh, uh, think works is another uh, um, service uh, server. You can connect your Pi or Arduino and send the data. And they have a lot of, um, applications or online, you can use MATLAB, you can use Excel sheet, you can display your uh, data online, anyone can get uh, access to your data. The data can be analyzed and uh, whenever you have a certain situation, it can react, send an email to someone or send message or send a control signal uh, back to the Pi to control something. Uh, here I will give you an idea about uh, an IoT architecture. It's very simple actually, and you can you can come up with your own architecture. Uh, this is something uh, I personally use it uh, here in my lab. Give it to my student. I came up with an architecture to um, to design any uh, IoT application. Um, like for example, we have uh, a four, like almost three levels or we can call it four levels, it's up to you to ha how you interpret it as. But uh, you have the sensor or the physical layer and you can come up with any kind of sensor. And this sensor, um, you can, depend on what kind of sensor, you can pick any microcontroller to connect it. And then you need a, a Wi-Fi uh, or Zigbee or whatever, any communication, uh, protocol you can use depend on your application. So we can have here, we have Wi-Fi, uh, Zigbee and uh, other modules. And then you can send to a gateway. Gateway, usually it's a, a, a high-end uh, microcontroller. Could be a, another Raspberry Pi uh, with enough power to send the data to the cloud and um, process the data on the cloud and then it's two-way communication. Either you use the 3G or 4G because now we need a uh, different range of communication or either you use a Wi-Fi if you Wi-Fi available to send to push the data through the internet. So, and as I said, I give you many option for microcontroller, many option for sensor, many, many option for, uh, wi uh, or for wireless communication. So you can pick, this is a, this is a simple architecture 
and you can come up with your own. This is a generic one. You can pick whatever you want, but you can come, come up with a customized one. Use a specific sensor, a specific mic controller, and specific wireless communication, and use any of the service uh, website or server to send the data and download. Even you can uh, come up with your own server. You can send the data to your own server. You can have your own database and you deal with it. But usually I prefer to use something uh, or like from whatever I give you or any other um, server. Uh, the, you have more uh, uh, like competition capability, storage, and so on. But you still can do your own server for uh, cloud computing. Uh, now we'll start to talk a little bit about IoT challenges. The first challenge here is the big data. Believe it or not, like almost the last two years, we collected almost 90% of the data we have it in, in our life. So because we start to have everything smart, we have a lot of sensors, we start to collect a lot of data. But do we use all of this data? I don't think so. So it's a lot of data, and the challenge now, how to make use of this data. The data is available, but what to do? We have a lot of data here from camera, from sensor, from tem temperature sensor, humidity sensor, accelerometer, motion sensor, all of this, you name it. Uh, believe it or not, your, your smartphone has at least seven sensors, and this collecting data. So what, what we will do with data? How we can deal with big data? how we can make use of the data itself. The data is useful, but how? We need to react on this. We need to do more research, how to do data mining, uh, artificial intelligence, and all of this to use the data. And it give you an idea, like maybe in 2017, this chart here or this uh, graph here give you in 60 seconds how many uh, Facebook uh, account uh, in 60 uh, or uh, how many Facebook login in just one minute? It's almost 1 million login. How many, um, like uh, maybe tweet in this one minute? It's more than half million. And uh, maybe how many emails, how many LinkedIn account? Per, you can, if you look at this number, you will find a lot of information, a lot of. Uh, stuff is going on in only one minute. And this is just for internet. How about the sensor collecting the data? And if you look at this chart here, that you will find that uh, the IDC estimated that in 2020 will have 45 gigabyte. You know how much is gigabyte? Gigabyte is almost 10 and you have 21 zero. It's a lot of in, uh, like uh, information, a lot of data. And uh, like by 2020, each one of us will have five or more than five gigabytes of data. And by 2020, 40% of the data will come from sensors. So uh, all of this will uh, trigger something for us or it's a challenge for us how to use this data, how we can make sense uh, or get information, what is useful, what is not useful, what's... Uh, uh, what we need to do, what we need to uh, uh, like uh, to consider with this lot of data. And uh, maybe let me do here another one, like security. Security is a big issue. And I have seen from the survey that some of you want to hear more about security, but uh, I will give you an idea here. It's not my area, but uh, I, I start to work a little bit with security. Like for example, one of the application I will show it to you here uh, about Internet of Things is uh, uh, healthcare. Like for example, uh, if we proceed and do IoT, like for example, someone has a problem with heart, so they have a pacemaker, and he is connected to the internet. The pacemaker is connected to the internet to control the pacemaker. You don't have to go to a doctor to to control it or like it's make it more much easier you send the information and then uh, you do processing on the cloud and then send back to the peacemaker to control the heart you to make our your life easier but imagine if someone has a problem with you or an issue with you if he can uh, log into the internet and control your peacemaker while you are sleeping or while the person is sleeping uh, someone can kill someone here so uh, security and, and is an issue. It's a big issue here. 
So um, we need to find out um, a way to secure the data because it's, it will be open. The data will be on cloud. Anyone can access the data. Anyone can control anything. So this is an issue, actually. Um, I think there is uh, something we, we, we were talking in one of the conference about to give uh, each connected device uh, a number or ID or like social security or national ID or something like this. And this, uh, if you do some, if the device do something, it can give, uh, reduce this number. If uh, the device is behaving, it give a good number. So, uh, and depend on this, it can give access to certain stuff. It's uh, because uh, security, you to implement uh, traditional security algorithm, I, d I doubt this will work with this massive number of devices or massive number of connected devices. So they have different idea to approach how to, to establish security. Uh, but anyway, to save time, uh, as I said, security will be an issue because sometimes if you look at this graph, you can find in your, since your home is connected, even like, for example, here, if you're trying to go outside, uh, your door can negotiate with you to get out or not, or it can get money from you in order to allow you to get in or out. So I, uh, I will leave this to you to read it. It's uh, uh, some jokes about IoT, but it, 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 it has something of, from reality because everything is connected. And uh, even your trash here, like for example, if you don't send us cash, your reputation will be in uh, in the trash or yeah something like this it can, it can connect you to the your social media and send some of your information and anyway uh, uh, the point here is to give you an uh, an idea about the uh, security is an issue it's a big issue with IoT because the data is available online and anyone can access and control uh, anything. Uh, another thing is bandwidth, because as I said, the number of devices will increase dramatically. The bandwidth uh, available will uh, will be sold. So we need to react on this, how we can come up with uh, ideas about how to improve the bandwidth. Another thing, as I said, because Internet of Things here, everything is talking to each other. We need to come up with a standardization because uh, we need all of the things talk the same language because uh, IoT, we don't have a rigid standardization till now about because how come the animals will understand uh, your car or your webcam or the light will understand uh, your shoes or uh, something like this. We need to come with something common ground so each thing can understand when it plug it can um, understand the others or every every everything will understand each other so standardization we're still working on this we need to come up with more standardization in order to uh, make it easy for things to connect it now i will talk very quickly about some applications and and again i'm just bringing here a few applications but it's a lot of applications and um, giving some example on healthcare and uh, smart infrastructure, security, surveillance, transportation, and so on. Let me give, give some background here, maybe about healthcare. You can find a lot of uh, hospital start already to remote uh, um, uh, diagnose patients and stuff. So healthcare is promising. Uh, we'll, we have all of the wearable devices that can monitor our hearts, our blood pressure and everything and can send the data to the cloud, analyze the data and give you the right medication or control some devices to make your life easier. Uh, also infrastructure, we have smart cities and all the, as I said before, all the structure can communicate with each other to make our life easier. Uh, automotive. Uh, we have a lot of uh, cars can communicate with each other to uh, manage the traffic to reach to destination faster and save fuel. And even I can give you very quickly a project we are doing right now. Cars can sense the parts they need and before it break and they can uh, report this to the dealer and dealer can report this to the factory and uh, all the cars will be connected 
So the factory will uh, manufacture only the parts the cars need and send it on time to the dealers. And your car will have your calendar and it can book one hour or two hour and go by itself and fix itself, pay for this and come back to you without even you know or uh, it can be ready um, on time. Uh, and uh, again, this is to save time, to save money, to save uh, fuel, to save, uh, um, to make our life easier. Another uh, connected vehicles, and as I said, again, another application vehicle can communicate with each other, can communicate with uh, infrastructure, can communicate with the uh, road itself. Uh, we have another project with self uh, or uh, smart parking. The car can request parking spots and go by itself, park itself, and come to you on time whenever you finish your work. But anyway, to make it easy, we have another project going on in my university right now, wearable for healthcare. We have some, and you can see here, some devices that you can wear. It can detect uh, your heart rate and your blood pressure, and it can detect if some elder people something going wrong with them. It can detect uh, if someone uh, fell down or, or something like this. It's uh, it's a lot of uh, ab applications here and a lot of use you can do. The last uh, project we are doing here about structural health monitoring, we have some sensor connected to the bridge and this sensor connected to the cloud and from the data from the sensor we can uh, even detect if something wrong with a damage in the bridge or a crack is starting in the bridge and we can detect this and even we can uh, predict that something will happen and we can keep monitor this and report this to right people to go fix uh, the bridge before it collapse. Uh, I think uh, this is the last application but as I said I have a video here uh to share with you uh as i said before uh the system is very uh, simple and you can uh, design it in in even in one hour one of my classes i um i give them one question in midterm uh how to to make our classroom smart and with one hour all of them they came up with smart ideas good application and one of them is like, for example, it's fire detection. If something is fire happening in the classroom, they can detect and they can report to the, uh, the university police and they can uh, report it to maybe the director or the dean or whatever, and it can uh, direct the message to fire station to be on time. Like I will show you here this video with one of my students. It was like a project. I, I, I usually we have in our lab, few sensors and this is our meter i give them one question to make the, the classroom smarter in one hour this one of the project one of the students came up with and uh, let's watch the video here and then we can start to uh, accept the question 97 midterm project it is a fire detection system for the classroom how it works is it uses this sensor here on the right, which is the temp and humidity sensor we are all familiar with, along with this sensor here on the left, which is a uh, flame. We got can we, can you stop the video for a while? I guess it's not showing. Is when a flame is detected close to the sensor. Uh, did you see anything, Ahmed? No, no, the video is not working, I guess. Uh, we, we, can't, we are not able to see it. I'll try to play it from my side. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay, this is my 597 midterm project. It is a fire detection system for the classroom. How it works is it uses this sensor here on the right, which is the temp and humidity sensor we are all familiar with, along with this sensor here on the left, which is a flame sensor. I got it in a sensor kit last semester. Uh, again, uh, the idea for, uh, for IoT to conclude this, uh... The IoT is not uh, something new, but the concept is new for in market and new in uh, for, uh, 
uh, consumer or for regular people. But uh, people are working in research or companies. We, we are doing this for a long time. Ago. And thank you for the new technology and advancing in the technology. We can have a start to have a uh, uh, very cheap uh, technology. Uh, you can have very cheap microcomputer, very cheap sensors, and the service online is available, open source. You can uh, design a complete IoT system from A to D with even, you don't have to have a good background about programming or hardware, uh, but even if you just need an idea, and then you go Google, you find whatever sensor you need, whatever microcomputer you need, whatever communication protocol you need, and put them together, and with few uh, clicks and few hours, you can finish your project. So IoT, it's a uh, new concept, uh, and um, it's easy for regular people to use. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, this is in terms of regular people, students and stuff. But if you do research, we have a lot of challenges to do research. And, uh, Communication protocol, routing protocol, um, security, uh, maybe sensors itself to come up with new sensor to sense new phenomena and stuff. Uh, database, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and um, all of this need uh, a lot of uh, researchers to do deep research to improve uh, whatever we have because in future we'll have more sensors, more devices and more, more demand and we need to improve whatever we have because uh, as you see in 2020 just after two years everyone will have seven devices or more this is just an estimate and uh, maybe 10 years down the line we'll have more so bandwidth uh, i don't think the current bandwidth can handle all of this uh, even the storage and uh, Capability, I don't think this will, uh, whatever we have now is enough. So we need, in terms of research, we need a lot of research, even if you are doing hardware or software, computer science, computer engineering, or electrical engineering, even mechanical, any, anything right now, we need to work together in order to improve the infrastructure we have, improve the technology we have, and then um, uh, go there. So anyone can, be attached to Internet of Things. If you are a beginner, uh, you you have a, something to contribute. If you are doing research, you have something to contribute. If you are in company, you have a, something to contribute. So again, it's uh, it's uh, and it's coming. We cannot resist anymore. The smart city initiatives in all over the world they start to initiate, uh, even in the government, the idea to establish the smart city. So even if you are a regular one and you need to use this, so you need to be aware about Internet of Things. So you can use it even if you buy something for your home, for your car. You need to be aware about IoT. So you can, we can improve our life. Uh, thank you for uh, listening to my presentation. And now I can accept uh, your question. Uh, okay, there are many questions. We'll start with uh, Muhammad Mehdi. Is so basically everything we we will be programmed and send coronavirus. Yes, this question. Uh, can you repeat the question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's for, I'll broadcast the question for you. Can you okay, see it now? Yeah. So basically, everything will be programmed and synchronized. Yes. So everything. Uh, will have the capability to send data and receive data. And in order to do this, we need to program and synchronize everything because if uh, at least for something if for, for critical uh, situation, you need to know uh, to synchronize because you need to react on, on a certain time. So we need um, uh, everything will be programmed and synchronized with each other. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's good, good, good point. Okay. The second question is there a stack mod, uh, model uh, depicting the, cover, uh, the convergence in programming? I don't know what he mean, but let me see again here. Is there a stack model? Uh, 
convergence in uh, this is a, a programming question con like um, convergence in programming yeah for sure uh, there are a lot of stacks module models you can use but uh, uh, again programming I'm a hardware guy and a system guy so maybe this is a good question for uh, programmers uh, next Ahmed, uh, can I implement this and add it to my home to make it smarter or do I uh, I need this? No, uh, you can do this. Actually, as I said, uh, my student, even the freshman student, they don't have any idea about anything. And I give them project to for uh, automatic door opener. They establish a camera on front of the door and whoever come to uh, your home, it can do face detection, for example, and if he, this person in database, it can allow him to get in. If not, it can send uh, the picture to your smartphone and do it. You don't, <coughs> you don't have to have a, a good background about Internet of Things to, to do it in your home. You still can do a lot of uh, application in your home to make it smarter. And everything is available online. You can buy the sensors, the uh, microcontroller, and the system or, or the API services available for free. You can connect your home. And I have a lot of students here, even the, the first year for them in engineering here, and they are able to, to do a lot of uh, IoT application in their uh, home. So uh, yeah, yeah, you, you can. You can implement this at all. Mohammed, uh, a greater challenge of IoT you might have skipped is the energy consumption by trillion of IoT device. Don't you think it's a great challenge? Yes, yeah, for, yeah, for sure. As I said, I I, I give some challenges, major challenge. Uh, uh, energy power consumption is a challenge for all for everything actually, and. Um, for myself, I start to see it. It's a little bit mature now. It's not challenging for IT like security, because all the devices right now, uh, it's even for like for for example, uh, sensors module complete module with a small battery. It can last for ten years. We have it now, so it's a challenge. But we are doing good job right now in terms of energy consumption with all the IoT devices. Uh, we still need to improve this, but it's not challenging as security. It's not challenging as bandwidth. Uh, I agree with you. It's, a, it's power consumption, energy consumption is a challenge, but we are doing good job in this and we are improving the energy consumption. Um, uh, next question from Ahmed. Uh, how we can use open source data in the field of IoT. Uh, actually, I give two examples here, ThingWorks and Timbo. You, what you need only to go uh, subscribe with them. You can uh, just um, sign out uh, or subscribe or sign, uh, sign in with them, I'm sorry. And um, they give you one month free uh, even if you want to have uh, real real time uh, data management or something like this, you can pay a little bit. Uh, you just need to subscribe with one of the company, and usually they give you the first month free, and you have the access to uh, this open source company, and they give you a lot of code and uh, ideas and applications. And um, yeah, it's, it will be easy to uh, to find open source online. Uh, next question: What are the current research topic in IoT? As I said, it's it depends uh, what you're doing. If you are computer science, you can work with uh, cloud computing, uh, security, and if you are electric engineering, computer engineering, you can work in routing protocol. You can work uh, on a new sensor a new um, uh, microcontroller and um, maybe a Mac protocol and you name it. So it depends uh, what you're doing uh, in right now because IoT is open for anyone in software, hardware, uh, in computer science, computer engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, any, you name it, any kind of engineer. So if you love software, 
you can work with uh, 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 Mac protocol, routing protocol, communication and stuff. If you are hardware, you can work with uh, uh, microcontroller itself, new algorithm, new data fusion and, and so on. Next question for from Kishan Raj. My question is in some country, smart city using IoT completed project from that what could uh, major failure? Uh, major failure in smart city, um, yeah, for sure, if we depend on everything will be smart and we depend on the technology, we can have a lot of uh, uh, major problem if we need to keep our eyes open anyway and watch everything. And uh, if I'm understanding your question is wrong, is, uh, right, uh, uh, major failure, even for power failure could collapse because if like, for example, the airport uh, is fully automated and uh, power, something happened to the power. So how we can control to land or take off for aeroplane. So yeah, we will have smart city, but in background we'll have humans to look at everything as well. Uh, next. Uh, Zubair, uh, I'm already into big data analytics and machine learning. Wanted to know where IoT fits in the big picture. How can I start using IoT data for big data analytics and machine learning? Yes, if you are doing uh, big data and machine learning, oh, actually we, we will depend on you because as I said, we are collecting data, a lot of data from everywhere. So if you can do, uh, analyze the data and uh, make sense out of this data and give the right uh, action or right control, uh, will be uh, great. So like data mining or uh, how you can filter the data because we have a lot of data, how we can just use the, the right data, right time and give the right decision. So, and machine learning is very important. So for example, we can improve accuracy for all the application by do machine learning. So we'll send you the data and then you can uh, improve the accuracy. You can give, uh, you can help us to improve uh, the decision. So actually, this is one of the big challenge, big data uh, for IoT, and um, yeah, uh, you can do a lot for us in IoT. Uh, we come to the end of questions uh, now, uh, and the time is over. Uh, we thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for your time and for your information and knowledge. We thank you. We thank all the audience for their attending this webinar and we hope that we'll see you in another webinar. Please don't forget to rate our webinar and uh, we'll leave the final talk to Dr. Ahmed. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much for uh, attending my uh, webinar here. And um, if, uh, I, if you don't have my email or my contact, if you search my name, you'll find uh, my contact anytime if you need. Uh, any help for IoT or if in future if you would like to collaborate, do something, do some research, an IoT or project idea, I'm very open to collaboration and uh, you are welcome anytime to send me an email uh, to, for seeking help or collaboration. I'll be happy to you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we will be uploading this uh, webinar to YouTube by tomorrow in 24 hours and we will send you the reply link to your emails. You can uh, watch it again or share it with your friends. Uh, as well, we have a related webinar called Blockchain by Nida Khan. Uh, you can uh, take a look at that webinar. It's in the YouTube and we wish you a great day. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed again and see you soon. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm.